Hello, I'm Ryan Rigby from Logan, Utah, highlighting today the continuum of care for second MTP plantar plate deformity. This is one of my own patients in the operating room ready for surgery. Obvious instability of the second MTP. The anatomic structures are insufficient for this patient. I will admit, I used to be tempted and, and often would do a wild osteotomy to decompress this and put a K-wire across it in hopes that it would scar down. Taking it out down the road, I, I was always disappointed that the instability persists. We find ourselves in difficult situations with the second MTP, and to get good outcomes, we have to address the anatomic structures. We have to repair those and bring stability back for good outcomes. Fortunately, Arthrex has us covered from A to Z. All the different situations we find us in, we have the instruments and the tools to treat those. Everything from a dorsal plantar plate repair to augmenting pore tissue with a four foot internal brace. As I mentioned, sometimes it's tempting to just do the while osteotomy. It's a straightforward procedure, but the data supports and shows that we really should be addressing the plantar plate, the underlying etiology. And if we do so, we're really addressing the source of pain and giving our patients better short-term outcomes and long-term pain relief. It's debatable on whether a while osteotomy is needed on every single case, and I don't think it really is, but I find it's often the underlying etiology. And this paper actually highlights that there's a correlation between the length of the metatarsal and a plantar plate disruption. So we need to be cognizant of what is really causing this in the end. What is the etiology? It may be a bunion. It may be a hypermobile first array. It might be that long metatarsal. But I think we've all seen and realized as we've watched patients come in and present at varying stages, this is progressive. And as it progresses through the different uh, phases and grading, and there's several different systems here, we find advanced instability, we find more deformity, and it becomes a little more challenging to treat. So honestly, I've started, I have a lower threshold now to take these patients to the OR if they failed non-operative treatment in the early phases when there's just a little bit of instability and a little bit of deformity, say maybe a grade one or grade two, I find I have better tissue to work with and I get better outcomes. Still very treatable in grade three and four, but grade one and two is where I really like to live in the OR because of the outcomes and the repair. So my algorithm really matches the staging, how the patient presents. So even in a stage zero, if there's no deformity and no instability, you're catching it early. If they have a long second metatarsal, I'll do a simple while osteotomy. And, and sometimes there's pathology of the plantar plate and the metatarsal is not long and you can do a repair of the plate without doing that while. I think that's a little less common. I usually find a while is necessary, but it's not always the case. And then in stage one and two, I'll do a, an osteotomy and then repair the plantar plate using the CPR kit, restoring the necessary uh, structure so that, that they have a functioning second MTP. And then in stage three and four, the tissues become a little more tenuous. You can't rely on them as well. And so fortunately, we have the four foot internal brace to augment and better support those structures. And then a hammer toe repair if need be. So here's an example, a stage two. It's not the most severe deformity, but these patients have symptoms. It doesn't function well. They hurt, there's deformity. And this is where I employ that CPR kit or a plantar plate repair from a dorsal approach. And basically here's a two weeks post-op and a two months post-op showing the position's been restored. But you really truly don't know until they weight bear. So on the far right, you see a picture of weight bearing. That's where the structures really have to work. And here you see that it's staying in position. I'm happy with the outcome by restoring and, and addressing the underlying root cause and the structures that need to be repaired to get that outcome for the patient. This one's more advanced, stage three and four. This is challenging. This is a hard deformity. There's a lot that needs to happen here. But in the end, this absolutely can be addressed. What I really like and I find is when the tissues, you know when you get in there, that's not gonna be a great plate. They may not have much of a plate left, but the four foot internal brace really allows me to augment after my repair and bring a lot of just structural support and augmentation to that repair. This was kind of unique because the patient actually had some tissue to still work with, so I did my plantar plate repair using the CPR kit and I had stability, but there was still a medial drift that I just couldn't balance around the capsule. And so I augmented this with an EDB transfer. And as you add the tape, you bring a lot of stability and a lot of augmentation as you address the repair and you lock it in with the teen adhesive screw and the phalanx. It's all knotless, it's pretty slick. And then there's a before and after showing the intra-op stability and then the real true test down the road showing a before and after that things are holding. And they're holding because we've really restored structural support to those soft tissues. Post-operative weight bearing, this is where you really see that everything's been repaired that needs to be repaired as the patient walks and loads this for a good functional outcome. My post-op protocol is pretty straightforward. I keep them off it until their first visit. I have them walk in a boot for about three to four weeks. I do find it's helpful to splint the toe into plantar flexion during the post-operative course to prevent any soft tissue uh, scarring and contracture. 
Usually these return back to shoes at about six weeks. I do put a carbon fiber plate in their shoes to protect that repair as they get back into activity. We start some physical therapy early on, basically working on plantar flexion strength. I keep the plate inside their shoes until week 12, and then they can return back to regular activity and sports and exercise. I do have them wear the little plate inside their shoes until about six months, just for higher impact exercise and sports. In summary, this is a progressive pathology. Again, just to emphasize, I find better outcomes if I catch these patients earlier. The procedure really matches the stage. Fortunately, we have the internal brace to help augment those more difficult uh, cases. Consider repairing these earlier on for better outcomes. It's a challenging pathology, but it's still very treatable pathology for our patients. Thank you.